Alrighty, so I've had a lot of requests to cover more in-depth sound design in Surge, um, which I'm which I'm happy to do. So I'm just going to do a try run of doing this. Um, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a pad sound, and we're going to just have a look at how it's put together. And I'm going to show you how to specifically make this pad sound uh, because that would be boring. I'm just going to show you a couple of things you can do, think ways you might approach a pad sound in Surge. Um, we're using both parts here in Surge. We're just going to go over some concepts of how you would use the modulator, stuff like this. This is overall pretty basic. I've got a couple of different filter routings going on here, and I've got um, two parts set up. So I'll just show you the, the sound first, and then we'll go into detail on how you would make something like this, or some of the tricks you might use. So. Okay, so let's start breaking it down first. So we've got the two parts here. Right now I've got it in dual mode up here, but if I switch it to single mode, we can listen to A and B independently. So let's just listen to A by itself. And that's, that's A. And now let's listen to B by itself. So they're both kind of more or less usable sounds in their own right as well, but when you put them together you get kind of a sort of a keys slash pad kind of an idea. So. so let's just focus on A for the time being and then we'll move over and focus on B. So um, I've got, for the purposes of trying to explain this best, I've tried to use a different kind of synthesis method here in each of the oscillators in part A. So the first oscillator here is a just a saw wave with some unison on it. The second one here is using a wavetable and uh, modulating some of the parameters on that. And then this last one here I'm using like FM to create sort of a noise kind of an effect, but like sort of a more of a metallic noise. So. I will show you part A, or sorry, oscillator one first. So oscillator one is just a saw wave. So basically all that is, is this unison saw wave going through a filter. And uh, that's it, that's all it is. So part B here. Again, this is really simple. It's going through the filter once again, obviously. Um, it, we've got a couple of things. So you can see here when something's got a blue line, that means I've been automating it, okay? Or uh, using some modulation on it. So here you can see that this sequencer is playing around with stuff. So what this is, is it's a little, little step guy here, and it's going through all these steps. And what I'm modulating here is I'm modulating the pitch very slightly. And I'm also modulating the formant over time. So the formant is making kind of a big difference to the wave if I just come out of the modulation here. The formant, uh, it basically thins the wave out, but it kind of changes the timbre as well. So as you go up, it gets almost like a kind of high passed noise sort of a sound. And then lower, it's, it's closer to the original wave shape. So I'm just automating that with this. Um, well, so in here, I've got the sequencer. Uh, selected so the sequencer is like the where you draw a bunch of little square waves there so I'm just basically modulating that up and down I just kind of hit random steps in there that felt good at the time and then we ended up with this sound I think I'm also doing something with the wavetable perhaps maybe I'm not I'm perhaps not no I am I am indeed I'm also doing a very similar thing with a different sequencer on the wavetable here. So you can see as I move through the wavetable, let me just take that off. And basically it's adding more and more harmonics. So it's, it's going up in octaves of a sine wave. So what I'm doing is I'm using the sequencer to kind of sequence 
where I am in that. And you can change this around however you might want. It's going to sound pretty drastically different. I hope I don't make an arse of the sound I had. No, for the purposes of the rest of this, but... So yeah, that's basically all that's happening there. It's um, just a couple of sequencers which are attached to the the wavetable morphine and also the forming control here. And let's hear the two of those mix, so oscillator one and oscillator two mixed together. And I'm also doing a bit of modulation on the volume here. So it's kind of phasing in and out of volume. The higher notes are coming in louder and the, or the higher sounding parts are coming in louder and the uh, the lower ones are coming in a bit lower. Okay, so that's the two main components. There's nothing crazy going on there. It's just two subtractive synthesis things happening together. So we got just a regular oscillator with some unison on it. And we've got a wave uh, wavetable, and this could be any wavetable. So like I could switch to this sci scientist all. It would sound certainly different, but would generate a similar effect. Let's look for a weird one. So it's worth, it's worth going through, you know, if you're using wavetables in a pad sound, it's worth going through a few different wavetables and kind of doing just different stuff to modulate it rhythmatically. And it kind of almost adds like an arpeggiation kind of a idea to the background. So you can hear there, it almost sounds like there's an arpeggiator going on, but there isn't. It's just a wavetable. So, let's look at the last oscillator that I've got in here, which is this guy, which is um, an FM kind of an idea. So, oscillator 3, yeah, it's just the FM2, so I've got, uh, they're, they're basically at fairly high ratios, um, they're FMing this, uh, this sine wave, and there's some feedback going on there too. So that's just bringing in sort of an abrasive edge at the end of the attack. So it's not really contributing anything tonally. It's just adding sort of a noisy sort of metallic ringing sound to the end as it as the pad swells up. So let's just hear that with the first oscillator. So it's pretty subtle. You can hear it kind of coming in there as a noise swell. And then I'll bring in that kind of arpeggiated wavetable thing. Probably messed up the arpeggiating thing a bit while I was playing around with it, but you get the idea. Um, let's uh, just quickly jump over to what's happening with the effect. Oh no, wait, but first, actually, before I go on, um, I'm about to miss something pivotal. I've got this oscillator drift um, carry on happening up here. So this thing is pretty cool. It's. Um, what it does is it, it makes it so that the oscillators, like 1, 2, and 3, they kind of drift in and out of pitch with each other. And it has a good sort of modulation effect. So I've got that turned up a little bit just so that arpeggiation sound is kind of a little bit out of tune with the, um, the main pad sound from oscillator 1. So Now that's subtle, but you can definitely hear it sort of a more chorusy kind of a sound but if you bring it way up you're gonna get something that sounds quite detuned but also quite good you may in a simpler sound you might just want to crank you might want to crank the shit out of that just fucking go for it with the detune it sounds cool that sounds 90s it sounds brilliant so that is the synthesis part of the sound. Uh, let's now just uh, quickly have a look at the effects. So the oscillator A is going, or oscillator A, part A is going through its own reverb, which is significantly longer than the reverb that I've got oscillator B feeding into. Um, it's just a long reverb. That's all it is. Just a reverb with a quite long tail. As you can see here by the decay time being quite far and the mix being quite high, we're going fairly strong with the reverb. Then I've got, um, Anything else kind of uh, effects wise? No, it's just feeding into a delay. So it's a delay and a reverb, nothing complicated at all. Then um, I've got no FM happening. We've got this um, filter configuration where uh, it's going through filter one, it's getting wave shipped, in this case it's not getting wave shipped, and then it's going back uh, and it's feeding back with, uh, with filter two. And what I'm doing here, okay, is I've got filter two if we go over to filter two, the offset uh, here 
is actually being modulated by this LFO. So let's uh, let's just listen to all of filter two. So if I swing this little guy over here, we're gonna have just be hearing all of oscillator or all of filter two. Ooh. It's bright. And then here's all of one. So that's just uh, filter one is just a basic like envelope on a on a on a low pass filter. That's all that's happening. Then I've got uh, this guy, which is offset from that. So what I'm doing is I'm using this LFO to kind of swing the uh, cutoff up and down quite quickly, and I've got an envelope on that, so it's kind of coming in over time. I've got the mix between filter one and filter two here. Um, just about here, so you're kind of getting a little bit of that modulation that's coming in through filter two, and then you're getting the regular, mostly the regular low pass from filter one. So yeah, that's it. That's it for part one. It's, it's very, very basic. So um, that's that's literally everything that's in, in part one. So let's move over to section B here. And we'll just have a quick look at what's going on in here. Again, we've got three oscillators. One of them is a basic, just a basic oscillator here. Um, I've got it set to between a saw and a square wave. The second oscillator here is a uh, sawtooth wave. And uh, I've got it, I believe, at a different tuning. Or do I? No, I don't. Um, but it's a sawtooth. And then I have, finally, an FM oscillator here, which is doing an actual FM tonally, making sort of a bell sound instead of what the other one was doing, which was just making a lot of noise. So let's listen to them individually and see what the crack is with them. So, so this, the other... The other um, Part A has like quite a long attack, so it's sort of swelling in, and this is creating more of the attack of the of the pad. So it's kind of the filter instead of climbing upwards is coming down to create sort of a pluck, but a very elongated pluck. So you can see over here on the filter envelope, I've got no attack, so we're coming on straight away, and then really slow decay, so it's slowly coming down. So if I speed up that decay going to resemble much more of a pluck but we don't want that because it's a pad not a pluck so we want to keep it sort of long so that's the square wave um am i doing anything nice here yes yes i am so i'm using this lfo2 here to modulate the detune if we can have a look at that there so um i'm using this lfo2 here to make it more or less detuned over time So you can sort of hear sometimes it's like really, really detuned, like let's just pull it up. So sometimes it's like here, and then sometimes it's here. And it's just a nice kind of difference. So over time it's modulating. I haven't got the rate set up here to be exact, it's just at one hertz. So it's kind of just freely modulating through being at different levels of detune. Just to make it sound a bit more interesting, like it's changing up. So that's it. That's it, that's all that's happening with Oscillator 1. Let's have uh, just a quick look at Oscillator 2 and see what he's up to, so. Yeah, so this this is just a layer again. This is literally just a layer, so instead of uh, this kind of half square wave, I'm uh, doubling it up with this saw wave, which is slightly less detuned, so it's kind of keeping the sound a bit more stable. And it's got less voices, so this one over here, we're going 90 with the voices. We've got five voices on that one. We've got two voices on this one. So this is kind of meant to rein the sound in a bit and give it a bit of focus. And then the two of them together. So you can hear the first one's kind of wild. The tuning's all over the place. And then the second one is kind of more focused, basically. And then third of all here, we've got this uh, like FM plug. And just a note here as well, and because of the type of sound this is, a pad, not a bass or, or like a really 
staccato kind of sound. All of the um, all of the oscillators have the key track turned off, so I want them just to start whenever they want and be kind of you know random in a way. So the third oscillator here is an FM oscillator. Um, I've got a it, the first modulator here is at a ratio of six, so quite high. Let's just hear what how, what that sounds like if we change it. So it's brighter the more you go up. I liked it at about six. You may also like it. Let's try it at like four. Four, it sounds kind of good. We're gonna go with six. I trust myself. It was. It should have been at six. So uh, that is being modulated by this envelope, which is just which is just bringing it down. So it's just giving a very quick attack. If we were to extend that, um, if we were to extend that decay. It would be less of a pluck. And then just to make it sound a little bit more metallic, I've got the second oscillator coming in here as well. And this has a ratio of also six. So that's operating on this one by ratio of six too. And of course, if I was to change that, it would significantly sound different too. So it gets way brighter the higher you go up. Which you may want, but I didn't. So I'm gonna keep it at six. So that's that. Finally, this one has uh, a little bit of this ring log coming in as well. This is just two and one in a kind of ring modulation relationship. It has the effect of making the sound kind of noisier and a bit dirtier. I've just got, got that mixed in a little bit. So you hear it all together. I think I might have actually changed up that detune a bit. I think it was uh, supposed to be a little lower than that. Probably about there. So, and then finally, there's just a little bit of noise coming in there. And that's just to make it really airy. The idea with this sort of a sound is you would probably you would probably high pass it and have it with other elements and it would kind of be going on there in the background just kind of floating around doing its own thing. So uh, that's basically it, I believe. This is also being sent to a, the delay and the reverb, though not to the same extent as the first one was. And uh, oh yes, I'm also doing a little bit of modulation on this oscillator drift here. So if we click on this, you can see that I'm changing the amount of drift I'm using. So that changes it significantly. So let's pull this back a lot. And let's pull it way up. So we're having the effect of it being like quite wonky and out of tune. And if you don't want it to be as noisy, you know, you can pull down this little ring mad guy. You can pull down the noise. And we can clean it up a bit. We could pull the tuning in a little here. And make it more stable. If that's what you're looking for. But in this case, well, wasn't what I was looking for. So let's put it on dual again and remind ourselves what they sound like together. Again, I kind of messed up the, uh, let me just fix up that first oscillator. I feel like we can make that sound more like it was the first time when it sounded better. So let's pull that down. So yeah, um, you may not want to make this exact sound. You may not like it, may not be for you, but uh, hopefully some of the concepts that I showed you there you found helpful um, let me know if you have any questions or anything about it and um, yeah let me know if you want me to like follow up on this and do more with uh, this synth or like design in particular sounds just little tricks in the synth for design in particular sounds uh, we can do bass sounds or something like that let me know let me know and I'll uh, I'll be sure to do that thank you very much